Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back in 2017 with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We are taking your questions today, questions from the Lead Gen Scripts and Objections Group. I want to hear from every single one of you. Thank you so much if you're watching us live uh, here on Facebook, either on Greg McDaniel's timeline or on uh, with the Real Estate Uncensored Facebook page. Uh, if you are not, if you are watching this in the future, uh, thank you, first of all, and make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, or Stitcher, depending on uh, the version that you prefer. And uh, for the first time in the new year, let me welcome in the junior grandmaster himself in the co-pilot seat, my co-partner in, in, uh, partner in crime, uh, real estate related at least, uh, Greg, <laughs> Greg, what's up today? Matt, what's up? Happy 2017, you guys. Oh my God, what a blessing to be back with you guys. Matt and I have been looking forward to this all damn day. But mm -hmm. here's a little problem that I found out, found out about Matt. Um, it's a holiday today and nobody decided to tell me that. And I couldn't figure out why the freeways were vacant. My office was a, it was absolutely a ghost town. I'm like, what's going on? I literally checked my, my, my phone. I'm like, is it Sunday? Did I, did I get here? On the <laughs> I'm picturing you just stepping through the Western swinging door of your office into like a, a, a spaghetti Western theme song and a tumbleweed just blows through your reception area. <laughs> round, round, round. <laughs> There goes, there goes the, uh, the, exactly. the tumbleweed. But I, uh, God, after being sick for a month, it's amazing how you jiggle in the wrong places. And so I made myself a promise um, to start working out or doing something, but I got up this morning. And uh, unbelievably, I forgot to set my alarm clock because I haven't used it in a month. <laughs> um, but I got up and I did 50 push ups and Holy Christ, that is a lot harder than I remember it. <laughs> it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long month <laughs> getting back into the swing of things, but it's uh, oh my God, guys, I um I I was re I'm reading this book called The One Minute Millionaire, okay, and it's a phenomenal book. It's 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 12 hours, and it's, uh, the first six hours is like the implementation and how to get it going and do, do you know step by step nuts and bolts. The second one is a story about how to do it, and the one part of the uh, of the of the um of the uh, books they're talking about real estate because they got to make a million dollars in 90 days and you get this lady's kids back and everything else but the kind of the guru in the book she was saying you now we're talking about how to do, find fix and flips and everything else and she said hey i want you to go take your you know here, here are your, here's your business card i want you to go hand this out to as many people as you possibly can in the next hour and then come back and tell me about it and so everyone's like oh, okay but she's like look on the back of the business card and everyone looked on the back of the business card and it said, this card is worth a thousand dollars. And they're like, why is that? She said, you know what? Because every single person that you give that business card to, you say, if you refer me someone, I'll pay you a thousand dollars or a referral fee if you're a licensed real estate agent for marketing you know, services rendered. They're like, oh my God, like, would you go, would you, you know, would you be a, a you know, ashamed to hand out a business card if it was going to pay you a thousand dollars? Everyone's like, no, not at all. So these teams went out and they started doing, uh, they started handing out the business cards. One team came back and they're just giddy and giggly like two little schoolgirls. And they, they had the funniest thing, man. They said, well, they're like, okay, so what are you so happy about? They're like, well, we talked about how we could go and get the most bang for the buck. And we were at near a, conf you know, a hotel that had a conference and it happened to have a, an investment or investor conference. So they just literally like ambulance chasers stood outside the swinging doors and just, here's my card, here's my card, here's my card. It's worth $1,000 to you, right? Then the speaker of this little event had like 250 people at the event, you know, said, oh my God, you know, this is great. And they were able to get up onto the stage and present to everybody. And they wow. were able to get like 159 cards in an hour or something like that. And it all became bird dogs to help them find uh, future investments. So, I mean, <laughs> I just, I just thought it was really cool. I'm going to, I know that I'm going to put a business, uh, a stamp on the back of my business card says worth, this card's worth a thousand dollars, you know, and shit, mm -hmm. you know, combine that with the, uh, the 60 day challenge, Matt, I think that could be a hell of a way to kick off 2017 by handing out 25 business cards on a minimum on a daily basis was saying this card's worth a thousand dollars for every person you refer to me who's thinking about buying or selling. Yeah, I mean, I like it. it's out of the box. It's cool. I mean, what the hell? What's the worst thing that happens? So you don't yeah. pay them a thousand dollars because they throw it away. Well, <laughs> they're going to throw away your card anyways. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Michael, what's up? Rhonda, how are you? Ivy, what's going on? Tony, Martha, uh, Michelle, Sandra, Aaron, dude, what's up, guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to 2017. That's right. What's going on, guys? All right, so uh, let's let's cover this because I, you and I both got a kick out of this uh, <laughs> this question. <laughs> and please, I, I would like you to refrain from 
yelling at me. Um, so Seth Diamond says, this is in the lead inscription objection. So Seth asks, when a seller responds to a text, do you call them and speak on the phone or continue by text? Now, bef before you go off, Greg, I would like to point out that that did not say what you originally misinterpreted the question to say, which was if they answer, if they if they ask you to call them. That's not what the that's not what the question is. It's if they respond to a text, do you just continue texting or do you immediately pick up the phone and call them? I think it's a valid question. It is a valid question, but it's also you know they're already communicating with you via text, right? So continue on a communication on their chosen platform until one time until the time comes that you ask that other person. I say, hey, Matt, Jewel, your three obese little wood denting babies, you know what? Hey, can I just give you a call? Would it be okay if I talk with you for five minutes? Sure, that'd be great. Then you can give them a call. But you know, at most times, I mean, people will communicate to you in their favorite mode of communication. So honor that. I know for a fact, I'm not a big texter. I mean, I'm, I, I drive Matt batshit crazy because I do voice text to Matt <laughs> or video. Like I sent Matt a video, you know, private message today. He did not get back to me all day. And then I, t I hit him up on a text. I'm like, hey, Matt, what was that program that we just signed up for? He's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah, I just, here, here's, here's what's bad. I didn't even notice that you sent me a video <laughs> message. That's what I, so I didn't intentionally ignore you. I unintentionally, blissfully unawarelyingly <laughs> ignored you, which is fantastic. This is the best kind of ignoring you because then I don't have to think about it. Um, Michael Meyer did have a good question going back to your original point of the $1,000. So Michael asked, can you offer a grant to people for referring your business? Do you have to worry about legalities around uh, referral fees? So Greg, what say you on that? Typically what we do um, is it, it, that's a marketing fee, you know, an advertising cost. You can, you mean, you can, you can draw a, a sketch of thing up, you know, on the back of this piece of paper, and I could buy it from you for a thousand dollars because art is all. So you're just saying for, you'll find a way, whatever it is, you'll find a way to get it done, yeah. just based on what their business is, based on who they are. Yeah, that, okay. that, that's what we do, and you don't want to do a percentage because if you ever get audited and it's consistent, same amount. I mean, change your amount up a little bit. You know, if they did a really good job, give them twelve hundred. If they took fucking forever, give them eight hundred. I mean, whatever it is, incentive based. Okay. But yeah, no, there there can be some legal ease about that. Definitely check with your board and your state to make sure that you're compliant. I don't want you guys getting sued or getting into trouble. Uh, but that's just what we have found uh, to be very effective for us here in the area. But it is definitely a gray area. But it's mm -hmm. it's interesting to, or maybe donate a thousand dollars to a charity of their choosing or whatever. Okay. Maybe so just to sum up, Greg, Greg says, advertise all over the place. Make it very, very consistent. So it's always the same amount. It's always a percentage. <laughs> That's not and what I, I said. Oh, was, wait, okay, never mind. <laughs> all right, there's, a, there's, another, <laughs> there's another question here that caught my eye. This is from uh, Michelle, uh, and she has a middle and a last name that I'm going to mercifully not butcher, so we'll just leave it at Michelle. Uh, she <laughs> says, I'm looking for a few different responses to this objection. She said, uh, the objection is, why can't you just bring buyers? You'll still get a commission. Why do I have to list with you? Mm -hmm. So Greg, what's your best response for that type of an objection from a seller that's currently not on the market? I'd say, Matt, Julie, I truly understand and I appreciate your point of view. And I can understand that there can be some confusion in regards to, you know, why do I have to list it versus can you just bring me buyers? Let me help you understand this. Me as a buyer's agent, if I brought a buyer to you, I would have a fiduciary, AKA legal binding, you know, requirement that I would go and get the lowest and best price for them. They could, therefore, I could not be, I would not be going getting the highest and best price for you. So would you rather have me negotiate for you or against you when that time came. And I'm sure that we would all like to see you walk out with a little bit more money if I was able to protect your listing price versus finding out, you know, areas or ways that I could negotiate a couple of bucks off here or some favors or whatever else it's going to be. Does that make sense? Do you understand where I'm coming from on this? I'm here, I'm do help me help you. Okay. <laughs> help me help you. Help me help you. Um, I, well, I also like the. Uh, I, I've always liked this. That so you folk, you zeroed in on price, right? That you have a fiduciary responsibility to get the lowest price. You can also point out the terms. Like mm -hmm. the terms is where a lot of there's a lot of money that's up at stake. I think somebody said what up to two percent of the list price is up for negotiation in a typical real estate transaction. There's some there's some figure you can find out about. It. I forget the exact stat. But in other words, there's a swing, right? So in any real estate transaction, there's usually a certain percentage that can be gained or lost mm -hmm. uh, in how the terms play out, the contract to close. So regardless of what the price was that was offered and accepted, there's another percentage that's kind of in play. And that's where my negotiating skills come in. If I'm negotiating against you, you're going to lose that one to 2% that's in play because it's my job to get it for the buyer. That means every term, that means every inspection period, that means every waiting period, that means everything that goes a certain way, I'm gonna be negotiating against you on behalf of the buyer. And I'm very good at what I do, 
So then that you can bring it back to the, you know, would you like me to be negotiating for you or against you? Because that's how much money, and you can translate it out like 2% of the purchase price is X, you know, 40 grand that might be up for grabs that might swing one way or the other, depending on how good a negotiator you have on your side. Yeah, and, and you know, and if, if that, you know, well, yeah, I'm going to leave it there because we I can't can remember go. If that, who's, do you remember who said that? Was that Joel Rico? That Which might have part? been Joel Rico that said the 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 percentage of it could be Joel the, sounds the like up said. for up for grabs during the negotiation process. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was in that episode. So first of all, that cool. was an amazing episode. If anybody does has not listened to that, immediately go and listen to the Joel Rico episode. It was the uh, it, was it was the good, truth about sales was the title of la- end of la- very kind of not too far like the third week or the second week of December. Something like uh, that. Yeah. Somewhere in that. When I was deathly ill, laying on my deathbed. <laughs> um, oh, dude. So Sharon, I, uh, Aaron, Sharon, what up? Player pimp, you know, knuckles to you. I just did a call with her. She and her husband um, uh, listened to our show, man. It is the funniest damn thing, dude. She and I had a great conversation and her husband used to be uh, pretty high up in Freddie Mac. And uh, she got him listening to our show. And he's like, those guys are the first guys that actually make sense. And I'm like, well, uh, yes, we do, sir. Hello. <laughs> we, we make sense? I know. And that's like, we? That's exactly what you said. Are you sure about that, Greg? Because I'm pretty sure I make sense. <laughs> I'm like, no. Uh, Darren, great, great talking with you. It was awesome chat with you today. Glad, glad we got some time together. Um, Anyways, hey, happy right. New Year's to everybody. You know, Hannah, Josh, Sharon, Carla, um, uh, who else just jumped on? Jeff, Lynn, uh, Brian. Dude, Brian Gilman, what up, player? Dude, he is my hmm. notary. Dude, Brian and I get together, and it is straight dork fest when he and I start talking because it's all about apps and social media and hack this and do that, and oh we God. just dork out together, which we need to do again, buddy, because that's all. I learned so much from this guy, and we're gonna we had him on the show. We're gonna get him probably back on the show again, uh, just so we have a lot of fun. So, anyways, bud, I just wanna give you a shout out, man. Yeah, very cool. All right, so this is another question that caught my eye. Uh, Malcolm Lawson asked, I wanted to tap into my Facebook sphere of influence by sending a message to all my friends asking for referrals or business. Do any of you have a script or can you give me any suggestions on how to phrase this? Greg, what do you say about that? Okay, so he wants he wants to do a post on his page or does he want to like message each person individually? What What is his, what is he talking uh, he, He's looking for a message, a script for a message. Okay. Um, well, there's a couple of different ways of going about it. I'm going to pull my handy dandy cell phone out here, out here, guys. Now, this is one of my favorite things to do. I was just showing another guy how to do this, and you're probably not going to be able to see it, but I'm going to try to get to it as fast as humanly possible here. Um, on your messenger, which I know you guys know, um, I'm just going to go into Matt's. We can see where I left Matt a nice video, which he decided not to pick up. It's right there. It's being proof. Um, <laughs> on the bottom row here, guys, oh, down here, you can click on the camera icon which will then bring up the camera and you can do a 15 second uh, video uh, that you can send out to them and do a personal introduction. Hey, Matt, it's Greg, man, long time no talk. How's life? Happy New Year's to you. Hey brother, just trying to reconnect with everybody in 2017. Love to buy you a cup of coffee or beer. Let me know when we get together, man. All right, hope you and uh, you, you and your family are doing fantastic. Bye-bye. And you do that to as many people as you can in your Facebook. If you don't want to do video and you think you have a face for radio, then you can do a one minute and you, you press on the little microphone icon and that little red button pops up. You can press and hold that and you can do a one minute uh, audio recording that you can send out to them. Either way, you're going to perceive it being as techie, forward thinking, out of the box. It's not doesn't have to be written text. There's going to be, going to be no miscommunications and, and you can really have a good conversation or, or jumping off point at that point. So that's what I would do. Uh, be relevant be, be you know, for them and their lives. Try to bring value to them and then rekindle that relationship or keep the relationship going, whatever it is. And then ask how you can bring value to them. Like, hey, Matt, what does your perfect client look like for your business? I'm all, I meet a lot of folks. I'd love to be able to, you know, get some business going your direction. And Matt tells me what it looks like. And then I'm able to bring someone over that might be a really good value for him. Now the law of reciprocity kicks in. Now he's going to want to refer people back to me. So be persistent, be consistent, and do, do five people a day. Do five people a day. You can do five 15-second videos. And I, I, I challenge you to do six. <laughs> Jump <in. You> <laughs> six, six seconds. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's what I would do. I mean, Matt, what, what, what would you do? Because I know, I mean, you, you and I both like video, but you don't like video messages. So what would you do? Oh, let's see. Well, there's two ways to go about it. One of which I've experimented with this um, 
if anybody remembers the, the launch of the team building podcast with Jeff Cohn from this summer, uh, I put together a message for him to send out to his personal sphere, which he did until he figured out that he could have his assistant in the Dominican Republic log into his Facebook account <laughs> through the computer that was sitting next to him on the desk, uh, which is how they, they post Craigslist ads from, from the States without being from a foreign IP address. So anyway, he has his assistant go in and they took my message that I wrote up for Jeff to send from him and his assistant logged into Jeff's Facebook account went through every single one of his Facebook friends and sent the same message about, hey, you know, just want to let you know the podcast is coming out. Would love for you to, you know, check it out, download it and uh, subscribe to the show. I think you'll really enjoy it and get a lot of value out of it. The uh, the problem with that is that if you say, send the same message over and over again, whether it's you or somebody overseas, it doesn't matter. Facebook will shut you down. So the answer to that is to break up the message into two or three chunks. And so you copy paste you know, copy, paste, copy, paste. So end up, you end up sending what looks like a very authentic handwritten message, but you can do it at scale. That's what I would do. Um, it's very, I would focus like your video and audio messages, the stuff that takes the most time, send those to the highest value people, the top 50 or hundred that are closest to you that you know personally. Uh, but then all the rest of the people in your Facebook kind of world that maybe you don't know them as well. And you're not really sure if they're great candidates to send you referrals. Just do that. Like write up a little message, send it in two to three chunks. Uh, so you don't get banned from messaging on, on your own Facebook account. <laughs> and uh, you can message, you know, 500, a thousand people and, you know, just chunk out, chunk away at it for a couple hours a day. I mean, if you're not, doing any business and you're not going on appointments, why not? It's one of the yeah. easiest ways to generate, you know, people raising their hands. And if you guys are I mean, at Starbucks, sit around instead of, you know, sitting there and have your headphones in, why don't you send 25 messages while you're drinking your coffee, having a conversation with people sitting next to you? I and mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And I actually try to send, I send birthday, uh, you know, congratulations, little birthday notes to everybody on uh, every single day, whenever they have a birthday. And I noticed that, um, I remember one time uh, when we first started doing this, I would type one message and then send it to everybody. Facebook didn't like that so much and they got very testy with me. And so then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I need to write a personal message to every single person. And it's a lot more you know, authentic to do it that way. Mm -hmm. But it takes a little bit more time, but that shows that you actually care, right? There's a large difference there. Um, but yeah, I, I like that as well. I think that I like video enough that I would probably do a video message. And if I didn't know maybe enough, just for me being dyslexic, and for time, you know, it's the save time, I would do an audio message, you know? It doesn't hurt. I mean, if you don't, like I said, it's just, that's why Matt and I, you know, different different thoughts on how to communicate. I just suck at writing and I would yeah, rather just fine. not write. So I do audio or video. So that's a good yeah. question, man. It's a really, really yeah. good question. Yeah. All right, well, here's here's another good question. Before we get to that in a second, um, just I want to point out a couple things. Number one, go to McDanielRealEstateSystems.com. Uh, there's two things you can get there. One is Greg's favorite scripts, or you can just take the shortcut and go to MyFavoriteScripts.com. Uh, that is Greg's free download. Uh, where I went through all of his favorite scripts. We got him on video capturing everyone. So there's the script is written out for you, but there's also a link to a YouTube video of Greg going through each one so you can hear the phrasing and the tonality, which is the important part. So that's all free. And then also on the website is our high tech, high touch real estate farming product. That is like eight and a half hour long video training course on how to completely dominate an area with high tech, high touch prospecting. So combining everything from cold, warm and hot, outbound prospecting, ways to meet new clients, to ways to nurture them, bring them into your world through things like events and mailers and videos and community blogging and all kinds of stuff, all the way to the point where they are closed leads and then you working, uh, working them for referrals through things like past client appreciation events and stuff like that. So there's all kinds of good stuff there. So that the site is mcdanielrealestatesystems.com. Go check that out. Greg, mm -hmm. who do you want to shout out today? I was just pulling that list down. Um, Susan has a question really quickly. Hey guys, where can I hear the podcast? Uh, you, got, you can go download our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher, just look for Real Estate Uncensored, uh, and you guys can go w hear us there. Uh, you won't hear the newest one right away. There is a bit a little, a little bit of a lag time. So if you want to get the most up-to-date stuff, uh, our assistants pulled this off of the live feed and then they uploaded it onto YouTube. So you can either go to my Facebook page and you watch the different podcasts as we do there, but they will be put onto our YouTube channel and iTunes and Stitcher. So. Yeah. And make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. So yeah. that for those of us, that, for those of you who are listening or watching that have found us through Facebook, go subscribe on YouTube so you know exactly when the latest videos uh, are live and available. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, Greg, do you know? Do you know so, how to keep clean? Huh? <laughs> do you know? What? How, uh, Arne wants to know. Greg, do you know how to keep it clean? No. First of all, our no. podcasts are all explicit. 
on iTunes. No. Just, Arne, just Arne, Arne, we never Arne, keep it clean. Come on, Arne, you and I talk enough. You should know that I don't know how to keep it clean. And I mean, it's no fun <laughs> that way. I mean, that's just, then we All just right. go into the ordinary. But uh, so Matt, quick and shout out to my Darren. Side. Uh, well, I wanted to answer Darren's question real quick. So no, there is no link uh, for talent prospecting as of right now. Just PM uh, Darren, me. if you're interested, yeah, private message Greg, and he'll get you in touch with Phil over there, Philip, the guy mm -hmm. that sets the appointments for Greg, uh, because they're they're a relatively new company. There isn't uh, there isn't a website that's uh that's set up for them yet so yeah uh, that's but how yeah, they are. yeah phil is just fucking crushing it dude i love that mm -hmm. dude so phil yeah. knuckles to you pimp okay so <laughs> um one to our name she and i are always chatting she's finally off of her sick bed uh then we have jose uh sharon we have bill conrad who i'm going to do another show with tomorrow on his podcast uh karen beverly tim colton Stevie is uh, kicking my ass, and she's like, when are you going to get back out there and do those live, live lead gen? You got to get back on the horse, pal. I'm like, I am. I am. Relax. Um, then we have, like I said, Arne, Melia, Sarah, Debbie, uh, Ginger, uh, another, you know, uh, Joe, Vanessa, Neely, which I have talked to you in a while, young lady. And then, of course, Ronnie. So, you guys, hey, thanks for the, thanks for the messages. Keep them coming on. I love chatting with you. And if I can ever do anything to bring value, you know that I, you know where to find me. Um, and then, of course, talent prospecting, like we said, if you want, they have a tiered scale, guys. It's $3,500 a month, but they give $1,000 off the first month. Um, and they're setting between 10 and 12 appointments for me every week. That's appointments. Like, hey, Saturday noon, you have a listing appointment, go. That kind of an appointment. So, I think there's a tiered schedule too. You can pay a little bit less and you can, you know, get a few, you know, less appointments, but you know, it's different budgets, right? Right, right. Okay, cool. All right, guys. So uh, let's jump back into the question. So Christina Vergara asks, uh, hey, I need input from all your great realtor minds. I'm entering my third year as a realtor, recently joined a new company. I've closed four transactions. I'm looking to make farming my lead generation method and acquire new leads. How would you recommend I make my first approach to my farm area? Uh, is there a specific schedule I should follow? Any insights uh, and suggestions would be greatly appreciated. So cool. Greg, where, where would you like to... Uh, where would you like to start with that? That's a, I know it's a big wow. question. Yeah. Uh, and Josh, thank you. Appreciate the kind words. Um, yeah, we're all, always down for sharing knowledge and killer ideas. And thank you for saying that we kick ass. Um, Ooh, darn, yeah, Josh. So, so let, let's break this down real quick. So first of all, let, let's start with the premise of the question and back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So she's already decided for whatever reason that farming is her next step. With four deals under your belt and two years in the business, what say you about that style of lead generation in general before we get into the mechanics? I think it's going to do some couple of things for you. One, you have to, the, the prospecting has to, and farming has to be done in different models, high tech and high touch. Matt and I talk about this a lot. Now, if you're going to do door knocking and, you know, geographical farming, then you need to go and you need to take a look at three different aspects in each of these markets that you're going to work at. One, do you like the freaking area you're selling in? Don't sell in it because, you know, oh, it's a pretty neighborhood. Do you like the product? Okay, because that's really going to come through and you're going to want to spend more time in different neighborhoods. Me, I hate brand new developments. They freaking suck. Because one, I, I'm a sweater. And let's face it, if there's no if there's no trees on a hot day, <laughs> Greg needs cloud cover and trees. <laughs> I do. I do, I do. Um, so I like older homes on larger lots and stuff like that. <laughs> Can I buy you like a parasol? Like a, like a really umbrella from the 1800s? Just kind of twirl it around. Do, do, yeah, do, 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 do. twirl it. Exactly. It's a nice, nice bonnet. Way white gloves on, mm, okay. mm -hmm. you know I live in the Bay Area, right? That's gonna be sending the wrong signals. Um, <laughs> and now that I've every single person. Okay, anyway, right. so I would, I would identify the right, the product that you want to sell in, <clears throat> but then you need to look at three things. What's the turnover rate in the area? Now, what, what is the turnover rate some of, some of you are asking? It's this, you take the total number of homes in that area divided by the total number of sold homes year to date back one year then you're going to get a 0. 0.0 something. Whatever that 0. 0.0 something is, that's your turnover rate. Now, there are some, you know, some trainers that say don't touch anything under 6%. There are those people that say, like, in my area, I mean, shit, it's, um, I, we have a 3 4% you know, percent because we have a higher price point. Therefore, right. our affordability index is much, much smaller. So keep that in, in, in mind, okay? Yeah. So find the best turnover rates. Work with a, t a title rep if you, if you have to. Uh, if you're in an attorney state, then work with an attorney and kind of work on, on doing that, you know, find, finding your turnover rates for different marketplaces. It could be cities, zip codes, map out marketplaces. Like in the back of Chicago title, I know I can map out a territory and pull all the, all the numbers out. Once you identify that and don't make a decision on working in an area just because, um, 
just because you like the neighborhood. I mean, or, yeah. or it's like, this is where I grew up or anything else. This is a business, guys. You need to treat it like a business. So identify your turnover rate. That's number one. Because if you spin your wheels in somewhere that doesn't have a high turnover rate, but you love the neighborhood, well, you're going to do a lot of work and not get any payment out of it. What the fucking sucks? Number two, identify um, if there's a dominant agent or team in the area. If they're dominating anywhere over 10% of that marketplace, then they're going to get a lot of the business. And we can find an area where you can go that you can st start working in that isn't a dominant isn't dominated by a single agent or and or team okay that's gonna be, it's like it's like walking uphill in a on in a rainstorm in mud without shoes on it's gonna get slippery it's gonna get wet and nasty and it's gonna be pretty damn difficult so the last thing you're going to need to look at is what are the price points doing in that neighborhood are they going up are they going down they staying flat gradual growth gradual gradual decline because if you're working in a neighborhood that is you know going in the opposite direction of where you want to be because let's face it guys it takes the same amount of time and effort to work with the more expensive homes than the lower cost homes just the way it works and the lower the lower cost homes generally the folks may or may not have bought a lot of properties so they're more clinging they're more of a pain in the ass it's like an ex-girlfriend like a sticky bugger just won't get off your finger you're like Ugh, every question <laughs> <laughs> just compared an ex-girlfriend to a sticky booger <laughs> hey dude some of them are you know that um so <laughs> um the other thing guys i want to look at is you need to figure out different marketplaces to work in okay so this is what i'm talking about now you're gonna have I, I optimally you want to have three different marketplaces geographically a lower a middle and an upper end geographical farm areas now why do that it's because you want to you don't want you don't want to discriminate against anybody and yes i made a comment about the lower people being sticky yeah I, they are but as they graduate they become less sticky so your first time home buyers young couples singles you know buying a condos townhouses maybe a single family home in more affordable neighborhoods well they're going to live there for a certain amount of time and then they're going to graduate to the meet to the medium market and at some point they're going to graduate or most likely graduate to the upper end market as life progresses for them now the upper end you know folks are going to be buying into the lower into the medium area for investment properties the other two are going to want to get up to the higher you know the luxury properties and ultimately someone up here in the luxury market is going to sell that home because they don't need the big house because the kids went to college they're going to come back down to the middle market area where they can just you know buy a nice little house or townhouse lock the door and go travel the world now you need to understand the feeder markets does the lower feed the middle and the middle feed the upper and you want to understand where the buyers from the lower are coming from. You can do direct marketing into that specific marketplace. So I know that's really complicated. We have this in the farming package that's much more in depth. Yeah. Um, yeah but we spend I wanted to kind of get this idea. This, the yeah. video training going it's through how to pick a farm. Yeah. yeah and then, it's, it's a lot to get into. I mean, then if you want to do the high tech into the here, you guys can go to, go to, um, neighborhoodscout.com you know look at the hyper local niche marketplaces when you're out door knocking bring some information about the local area get a facebook live or a video recording talking about the neighborhoods and the ethnicities and the languages and the unique and notable people and places and the real estate costs and prices and what's fluctuating where they stand in the national market i mean guys i could go off on this for a while but i mean ultimately that's your basic way that you want to look at doing a geographical farming techniques to get started but ultimately what you really need to do as well on the back end you need to track your numbers because if you ultimately if you're going to do you know geographical farming or any type of farming and you don't track your numbers and you don't know what you need to do on a daily basis to get to your ultimate goal of your or your sales price or sales numbers at the end of the year so if you know that you can go out and you can go and you know talk like for me I know I can go out if there's 250 outbound calls done I know that mathematically in there there's going to be at least one solid lead that I can either do business now or business in the future. So if I want to do 30 deals, you know, which that's my goal this year, I want to do 30 million dollars worth in volume, just me, not my team, just me. Uh, and every, all the rest of the shit I'm doing, um, that I need to know exactly what I need to do on a daily basis so I can achieve that goal. Now, right. people are going to talk to you a lot about doing geographical farming or farming and say, oh, it's dead, oh, it's useless, oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, fuck them. That's not true. It is not dead. It is very much alive. And you just need, I can you go buy the farming packets, guys, for 99 bucks, and you, we, we're going to go super deep on it. But blending the high tech and high touch, you, learning how to time hack your time in your day is going to be what's going to make you stand out. So you can do one action, and then you can have multiple offshoots from that one action. And I mean, mm -hmm. that, I think that, I mean, I don't know how much more I can go into that because I, I mean, if I keep going, we're going to go down such a deep rabbit hole. I mean, yeah, I agree. What, what I'd like to pull to do is pull back <clears throat> a little bit higher level on that question 
and give maybe a little bit different perspective. So first of all, joining a new company, I, you know, borderline irrelevant. What is relevant is entering third year and closed four transactions. So entering, so in other words, she's been in business for two years and closed an average of two deals each year that she's been in business. So mm -hmm. most likely, I mean, just there, there's no, not a lot of other specifics besides that, but that pretty much tells us that there's not a lot of active prospecting going on. Most of those deals are probably coming from deals that kind of fall into your lap through friends and family, right? If you're only doing a couple of deals a year, unless you literally live in a place where you know nobody and you, you're an agoraphobic and you never leave your house, which, you know, <laughs> Matt. I know, Greg, you accused me of being, but I'm actually not that. So uh, I, even even I know enough people in San Diego that if I, I got into real estate here in San Diego County, I would have a database, even though I might not think right away that I do. If I sat down with a memory jogger and I started to think about, okay, my hairstylist and, you know, the person you at the bank. And pretty, are you kidding? I go, I go to a barber, pal. <laughs> no. Real men go to barbers. No. I, I go to uh, I go to a very flamboyantly large Hispanic gay man. I go to my buddy who's into restoring old motorcycles and trucks and is ta has arms of ta you know tattoo sleeves and is Mister Fix It. Hmm, who's more manly? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Greg. Anyway, hair stylist. I see your new nickname. I'm just call you hair. Oh, hair stylist. Shush. So just call me the hair. Um, anyway, <laughs> but the point of, <laughs> point of that, about Mary, we, we, we all have a database. Point. So I, I would suspect that w where I would start if I were in her position, if I had closed a couple of deals a year, each of my first couple of years, the first place that I would turn to is my existing database. I would do things like the Facebook messages that we talked about earlier. I would get more into doing Facebook lives and talking about the local area. If you want to focus on a specific part of the area, great. But to me, farming is farming is a method that takes about 18 months to start really paying off. Greg, wouldn't you agree? It's at least 12 months, if not a year and a half to three years. For over, it would depend. Well, Matt, it really depends. Think about it. How much are you doing? If you're doing six hours a day, it's going to be a much shorter bell curve for you to see, start seeing results. But minimally, guys, if you're really hustling, six to eight months, you're not going to get a lot. OK, you're just not from traditional farming techniques. So you have to be prepared for that. But it's like filling. A, I mean, if I was to fill this cup of water up, right, for the if it took me six months to fill this water up. But then if I kept putting water in, it would be it would constantly overflow and I would never have to worry about business. That's the that's the beauty of farming. And, you know, you can like you said, you can do high tech and high touch into this thing. So nowadays, I mean, it, it, you could never have done this you know, a year ago, two years ago, you could never have done what we can do today. So yeah. maybe those numbers aren't realistic anymore. Maybe something has skewed them based upon technology. I mean, I, I don't know. Skewed because, which direction? Skewed them too long? No, you know, now they're skewed in, in too long form because in the past, no one could see what you were doing. You couldn't share successes. You couldn't go out into a neighborhood, go door knocking, build a rapport with a homeowner, and then do, a, if they're comfortable, do a Facebook Live and interview why they love the neighborhood and show your expertise as, and, and that you're a hustler. People would just have to hear it. And if you remember to tell them about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I don't know, it's really, really interesting to learn, you know, I, mm -hmm. who knows, but yeah, I mean, it, it definitely takes time. It's not instant grat gratification and nothing else, nothing in this business is instant gratification. Okay. No, that, that's, not. that's it. Yeah. And that's it. So that, that would be my concern is just the time frame of farming compared to the time frame of get, getting more deals out of your database because you automatically don't have the trust factor. Mm -hmm. And anytime you go into a farm, you've got to establish the trust factor, which is why you have to do so much in terms of community blogging and Facebook live videos on the market and postcards and mailers and open houses in your market and stuff like that. Like uh, just to build up the name recognition to the point where you have the built in trust. Because that's, you know, I've been going through this um, this selling system course this last week that I kind of took off and just spent you know, most of the time just thinking, planning, learning and stuff like that. That was one of the things I did on I think, Tuesday of last week is I just sat down almost all day, went through this sales course. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things he was talking about, if you're going to make an offer to somebody, which in our case, it's offering to sell their home or offering to help mm -hmm. them buy a home, right? But regardless, mm -hmm. it's an offer. It's no different than selling an ebook or whatever. Right. So you're going to make an offer to someone. The more things that they have to believe in order to work with you, the worse your offer is going to do. Yeah. Right. So the thing about working with your database is, yes, they may know that you're new and there's some things that you can do to overcome being new in the business and still talk to your database about how you can help them. There's, you know, we, we've talked about those things before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what you don't have is you don't have a personal level 
of trust barrier that you have to overcome and build. They trust you as a person. They really just need to trust you as a professional. And there's easy ways to build that trust as a professional. When you go into a whole new market like a farm area and you're just some dude or some gal from across the way, or maybe you, even if you live in the neighborhood, which most of the time the neighborhood you live in is probably not an ideal farm anyway. So let's <laughs> no. say you have to even across the street, you have to go across the street to find an ideal farm. Great. Nobody knows you. They don't care about you. They don't trust you. Even on a personal level, they don't trust you. They definitely don't trust you as a professional. So there's a lot of things that you have to overcome to get them to accept your offer of, I would like to help you buy or sell a home. And the fewer things you have to get them to believe, the better it is for you. So that's why it's always better to start with a database, a sphere of influence, and then kind of radiate out from there. Um, work your database like Jeff Cohn when he got into the business. His goal was not even necessarily to get his database to personally buy or sell with him. It was all about training them to send him referrals. Mm -hmm. That's actually what generated him. What did he sell? 40 something homes his first year, made 96 grand in commission with an average commission of like four grand. I mean, it's <laughs> ridiculously low compared to your, yeah, you, Greg, you don't roll out of bed for that commission, but um, <laughs> Any, any of my clients that are listening, Matt's full of shit. He, he takes that back. Of course I would come roll out of it for four grand. You yeah, dick. I'm sure, I'm sure you'd go sprinting right to Concord for that. But anyway, point being. Actually, a lot more in there. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Point being, uh, he was able to say he was able to do a large number of transactions. He was able to do them in his first year in business because his goal was just to take his database and his sphere of influence, start taking people out to lunch and out to coffee and train them on how to send them referrals. If you do that and you do that well and you keep on and you focus on expanding your your database, things will get rolling really quickly. And then I think you fill it in with things like open houses where you can actually get immediate buyers that are out there in the market looking and you spin them off from that house, which probably won't be right for them, into a house that you can show them. Wait, Victor, you have a 22% turnover rate? Get off of this podcast and go prospect now. <laughs> I am slapping get off the good lord man that's like a gold mine. I, I would ass, i would assume there was a math mistake in there and it's 2.2 percent it has to be, it has to be because yeah. oh my god that's insane but 22 percent one in five people sell their home yeah in in, in, in yeah. 10 homes yeah. um, are they infested with snakes yeah, Ooh, i love snakes <laughs> um so here's another idea guys i mean to gain if you're new in the business or getting back into the business and you need that trust factor to start sooner than later with you then like i said start doing free facebook live videos if you don't want to do it live you can do the video directly to yourself and then you can uh, do it onto your business page and then boost that video out as a as an ad we can go to realtytimes.com which i will put a link in our conversation right now for you but you can go to consumer advice they have um buyer seller mortgage homeowners, new homes, HOA and rental advice. These are like a page and a half documents, guys. They're super, super easy to read. Um, and then you can take it and regurgitate it back out onto Facebook or whatever else uh, that you're gonna be doing this. Two things are gonna take place. One, you as, a, as an agent, you're gonna get smarter in different aspects of the real estate industry. Two, you're gonna be perceived as an expert by the people that are watching you because people only know what you tell them. So think about that. People only know what you tell them. So if you tell them, hey, you know what? I'm brand new in the business, scared to shit. I'm probably gonna fuck up the deal. Wanna work together? No. But if you tell them, you know what? I was reading an interesting article, article the other day and it was about the seven important steps to help you buy a first time home in 2017. Thought it could be practical to you and kind of what you're doing. Would you wanna sit down and talk? Now, which one do you wanna talk to? Because yeah. if you know the difference, you wouldn't know if it was my first day on the job and I didn't even have a desk yet. So you start doing that and then you go to Neighborhood Scout and you start doing videos or you go to Home Snap and you start getting the data off of those off the Home Snaps and, and Neighborhood Scout and you know, Realty Times. Guys, information is not the problem. You have it's, it's too much information, <laughs> some of them out there. But I mean, if you can take it and, dis and disseminate it down into a, 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 a format where your consumers can understand it. So we don't speak real estate to them. We take it and we, we make it real to them. And that's interesting to you and to your into your marketplace. Well, then you become the expert, and that bell curve, which I we and I were talking about earlier, Matt. I think that bell curve would dramatically shrink based upon the ability of knowledge because it's not behind paywalls anymore. You guys are watching a free podcast right now or on the on, on the replay that in the past you would have had to pay hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars of access, you know, and listen to the knowledge that we give away for 100% for free. 
So think about it. Look around you. Start looking in areas of your business, in your business, in your life where you can draw knowledge out of and become an expert on that that you feel comfortable. And then you can start breaking into the real estate because people want to know you, like you and trust you. They aren't going to do that if you don't talk their language and talk about things that could be relevant to their lives. Because the fact of the matter is people don't care about you until they know that you care about them. Once they have that shift and that aha moment, then they will put their trust in you and not even not only work with you, but refer people to you. I just got off the phone call with Bill Conrad and, you know, what up, Bill? If you guys are, if you guys are watching, um, you know, and, and he is referring his niece to me. I've never met him. His wife, Karen, who's an agent up in Reno. You guys look her up. She's a phenomenal agent, by the way. Um, and it, it's based upon that we, we just, you know, it's trust that went back and forth. So start building the trust with knowledge. That's, yeah. I know I run off. Yeah, like it. Tangent, but. All right, and so Donna Paul asked, should, uh, should we make it, speaking of the videos you're talking about, Greg, should we make it live or make a video to get it out there more? And I think there might be a misunderstanding here of what happens with the live video once it's live. Uh, it doesn't disappear. This is not Snapchat. So it's regardless of whether you film it and make it public, regardless of whether you film it on a computer and upload it or whether you broadcast it on Facebook Live, either way, it, you can set it to public on your Facebook page and it'll just live there. Yeah. And the thing is, is guys, the reason why I suggest doing lives is because Facebook is, it's not, it used to be organic growth, which is the most important thing on Facebook. It's not that way. They shut that down. Okay. Look, they're pushing their, it, it is a pay to play society. About 93% of all marketers pay to play on Facebook, but there's a way to work around this. So you can record a video on live because people want to have that interaction. You want to have that communication. Even if they're friend, your, if it's your aunt, you know, Mildred, in Milwaukee who watches the video, there's still interaction, okay? People are still gonna think it's cool that you went live, the people that aren't doing it around you. And they have direct, unfettered access to you to ask questions and be willing to have communication with them. It shows that you know, you're just a man or woman of the people. You're out there doing your thing and you have knowledge. Now there's different, oh, and, oh, and uh, Facebook pushes that to the top of the news feeds, by the way, at no cost because it's their, it's their new toy. So at no cost basis, you're gonna get more eyeballs on it. Um, and then as people like and comment, you comment and like back and interact and talk with them. That's going to bring the interaction rate because the algorithm is looking at how relevant is it. So how many people are watching, how much communication is going on in interaction back and forth. And then the, the, as you become more um, popular or, you know, you know, top of mind for folks, then the algorithm is going to keep kicking it up. So everyone, every time someone interacts with you, they're going to get more and more. They're going to notify sooner and sooner when you go live. So it's, it's, it's self-serving in a good way to do live videos because then you can download those and upload those and you can then you know go to your Facebook your your business page upload the video you have on YouTube and then you can boost that but your quality of video is going to go is going to be degraded because Facebook doesn't like YouTube uh, because Facebook wants all the unique you know content from their site so it's a it's a double edged sword you really have to figure out what you want to do um, or you can do this do your Facebook live on your site go over to your business page do the same damn thing you know, mm -hmm. it's it depends. Or on you get live leap for eighty bucks that allows you to broadcast in both ways. Hey, Mila, she said she thinks we're looking good, Matt. Well, thank you for that compliment. I will <laughs> own that. And Arne asks, Matt. is there any way to set the still picture for your Facebook Live videos so you don't have pause face? Um, no, and I, but I don't quite know what pause face is. Matt, it's um, this. Or. <laughs> <laughs> but what's pause phase as in when someone else pauses your live video what it's it's whatever it stops on <laughs> i mean that's you can't really control that that's that's no you know, it's just wherever means, the, the live video stops i mean it is live video i mean yeah. and you know what the fact of the matter is is that people want that they want the they want behind the scenes the nitty-gritty you know they want the regal you you know everyone has had produced product and content People would much rather have, you know, something that's that's real. And if you got the <laughs> look on your face, you know, then you know what? Try smiling the next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was gonna say that that is a good point. You can you can start your your live videos with a smile and like hold that smile for a second. That will help. Um, Super creepy smile. Especially when you upload it. Yeah, it's like just eh, just a cheesy smile. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um, that, that will help. Like that's, oh man, when I was with viral, we actually had people do that. So when we uploaded the video to YouTube, the screenshot that this is before you could do custom screenshots that fate that YouTube would pick out 
whatever was there on the screen for longest and we just made sure that their smile was the thing that was their longest on the video um but it's been a long time since it was like that so at least for now with live video guys you just you got to get over yourself i mean it's it nobody cares people love authenticity way way more than they do perfection uh you know I, I I dealt with that. We've all dealt with that. Maybe you didn't deal with it as much, Greg, because you don't. You're a little bit wackier. But I mean, <laughs> all the rest of us that, uh, that initially had some trepidation about going live on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you just got to get over it. You're gonna make a funny face. It's gonna pause in awkward places. Um, as long as you're not picking your nose or calling people uh, fat on on you know on, on the live video, I think you'd be fine. <laughs> so this isn't a good way to start, like. No. Oh, 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 it's live? Oh, no. Oh, shoot. <laughs> All right. So this is an interesting question. Kim Mallory says, we hand-delivered our first batch of cards yesterday to expireds that happened the night before. So this would be, they, they delivered some cards, so business cards, they deliver them to expireds in person or whatever that, that uh, expired over uh, December 31st into New Year's Day. We just got our first text from a pissed off realtor <laughs> that the <laughs> sign is still in the lawn and that we should wait five or six days. Fuck them. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yourself. You can do your job, so now you're, you, 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 want, you don't want to be humiliated? Well, guess yeah, what? I don't, I've never heard of anything that says you can't contact, prospect, or solicit an expired listing that is off the market on the MLS just because a sign is in the yard. Who the f cares? Yeah, exactly. It's like, look, the homeboy, you obviously couldn't couldn't hack it, so move over. The younger and, and, and more attractive is on the, on its way in. But yeah, no, that's bullshit. I mean, it, the funny thing is, I love this when agents love to try to flex their muscle, and they're like, "Hey, don't you walk into my area?" They're <laughs> super retarded, skinny muscles. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind, not going there. Um, but uh, you know, it, the fact is, like, you know, when someone says, "Don't walk into my turf," you're like, "This is your area, huh? This is." Your area, you own it. Get please, please produce all the deeds of sale uh, with your name on it. Once you do provide that, I will absolutely not, you know, not not prospect in your area. Oh wait, you can't produce that? Okay, <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> but <laughs> but in reality, guys, when it comes down to that. <clears throat> When I first started, I had this agent, I'm not going to say her name, but she saw me door knocking in her area and I, she, she gave me the look like she was going to skin me from my ankles to my neck. If I ever stepped, stepped uh, into her turf again, I never went back to her turf ever again, but then I learned to, to man up and it, this woman doesn't bother me anymore. She, she and I have actually become friends. Um, but when someone says, this is my area, I've been working it. This is my farm. Get out. of You can't farm my farm. Let us be very, very, very real about something. Success is not owned. Success is rented. Okay, you are only going to get, and they will only get success in a certain area for a certain amount of time. They will not be indefinite there. So if they're concerned about you farming in their area, well, then they're just threatened by you. Take that as a compliment and double down. All right, do not let someone bully you ever. You have far more worth and value than you might think of yourself. But as long as you can look at them as a, as a speed bump, do you know what? You know what's really good about speed bumps? Kind of like, a, like <laughs> never mind. You know, speed bumps. You slow down, but you still run the fucker over. All right. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, that, that is a, it, it's, it, this is just an example of a larger ep epidemic, which is somebody tries something that is working for somebody else in another market, or they hear about it on a podcast or whatever the case is. There's mm -hmm. nothing ethically, morally, or otherwise wrong with it, but somebody in their office, somebody in their market gets pissed off. They send an angry text. They get an angry voicemail. They get whatever, or they just get funny looks around the office. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of a sudden they're like, ooh, uh, ooh maybe, I don't know. It, mm, I'm not not sure about this now. Guess what? 99% of those people will be out of the business in three years. So who the fuck cares what they think? Exactly. Just keep hustling and grinding, guys. Work your feet. Work your marketplaces like we like we talked about. And you know, be creative. Be out of the box. Be, do something completely different than that other agent, that dominant agent, or that person has been working there for you know since dirt was invented. That they not they're not willing to do or can't do or won't do. You know, just continually trying things, keep throwing things at the wall, never stop, always be willing to work, you know, smarter and harder than them in the beginning years, because you're going to need to, but always be a student of the industry, always be finding ways you can time hack and life hack yourself to give yourself more ability to have a life, but also still dominate in the marketplace. And if they continue to get upset, do not be intimidated if they do a nasty call to your manager and saying, they're not, they're door knocking into my marketplace. And if your manager's worth their salt, <laughs> the manager's going to be like, and then? 
It's I like, have aggressive Indians. Yeah. Have a good like, day. Yeah, I, w- I wish I had 25 more like them. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I might locate some of those agents. Oh, that's so true. All right, guys. So Arne, Mila, Victor, Susan, anybody that's watching live with us, Donna, um, Shane, so just let's take one more question here from the group, and then uh, anything else that you guys want us to cover before we jump on uh, this one. Donna says, sorry, what's the website for neighbor? I'm assuming it's Neighborhood Scout is the one that you're referring to, neighborhoodscout.com. But guys, post whatever questions you want us to cover before the end of the show on this little comment thread. We'll get to them before we end the show. But this is one that caught my eye from Seth Rowland says, when you prospect FISBOs, are you setting a preview appointment to come by and meet them? Or are you just trying to set a listing appointment? I find that very uh, FISBOs take a few meetings to convert, especially the newer ones, because they haven't felt the pain of not selling it yet. And I'm wondering if anyone has success converting them on the phone to a listing appointment. So I know, Greg, that you have kind of a two-stage listing presentation. If you ran across a FISBO, would you just go out there to preview and meet, press the flesh, meet them without any expectation of taking the listing? Actually, I would tell them I, I'm not looking to take their listing today. I mean, because again, they're a FISBO. They already don't like me. They don't trust me. They didn't want to work with me. That's why they're doing it themselves, okay? Now, you have to go out there and bring value, show benefit of your services, explain to them that on average, you know, in a, in a, working with an agent, you make an additional $40,000 nationally speaking. And if we can offset the cost of my of my commission, plus put a couple extra dollars in your pocket, would that be okay? We'll still have the legal support from both my team and from my brokerage. You know, show them why they need to work with you. And if they flat out don't want to work with you, okay, that's great. Just see if you can keep them in the back of, uh, they'll keep you in the back of their mind and then start dropping value add to them. You know, I've talked about it a lot. Go get them the brand new, the most up-to-date disclosures. Go give it to them with a bow on it. Not literally a bow, but um, with maybe some articles or something else that we that they could help on. Maybe give them negotiation tactics, maybe whatever it is. A checklist. An improvement checklist. Mm-hmm. I mean, what to be wary of, you know, when buyers are negotiating tips. Mm-hmm. anything, right? And even if they don't work with you, maybe they'll work with, maybe their friends or family will work with you because you brought so much value to them. Um, and I was listening to a book the other day and a, for a FISBO was approached by a real estate agent and the, the, the homeowner said, no, I don't want to work with you. Oh, I, I can do this on my own. So the agent said, okay, no problem. And they waited and they waited and they waited about 60 or 90 days later, the home still hadn't sold. Um, and then a, an investor came in and below the listing price that that agent had said to that, that homeowner could sell for, substantially below that the lister, uh, the, the, the investor you know, offered on all cash to the homeowner and the homeowner lost out even on more money and had to deal with 60 to 90 days of pain. You know, paint stories, people, our brains are all about images. So show images of how you can bring value and how, it, if it could go wrong, how bad it could go. Don't try, mm-hmm. don't be like, don't be telling a horror story. Um, unless there's a real one that you've experienced or something along those lines. It might work, yeah. I don't know, I never tried it. Yeah. That, that's what I do, do that. All right, so uh, so Victor says, do you uh, do you use a pre-listing package before going out to a FISBO or expired, and do you email them a copy or mail out a hard copy? Um, so pre-listing package. I don't do pre-listing packages. Um, yeah, you have a really nice brochure that you take out with them with you on the first meeting that gives mm-hmm. them all your credibility, your team, the, a map of your layout of sales, and all that stuff. But you bring that. That's a physical thing you bring with you on the first physical meeting, which we get that. Um, yeah. I don't know if you got one handy, but we've showed that on the show a lot, guys. Um, so Aaron Wittenstein, when he goes out, he has already emailed them the copy of his 150-point marketing plan and his pre-listing package uh, before he goes on the appointment as part of his pre-qualification process. So when he's setting the appointment, and we go over this in Expired Mastery, um, when he sets the appointment, he takes them through 10, 15 minutes of qualifying questions and then says, now, you know, would you be able to review my, you know, the uh, pre-listing package with, with my 150-point marketing plan before we get together so we don't have to go over that mm-hmm. at our meeting. We can more talk about your home, price strategy improvements and things like that to really market the home and get the most money for it. Are you able to do that? Can you commit to that? Uh, And they'll say yes, or they'll say no, whatever the case is, but he's emailing that in advance. And so you can, um, I think Aaron sells his, uh, his 150 point marketing plan. Uh, And there's plenty of other, there's other pre-listing packages you can get. Um, There's some in the, uh, actually in the lead gen subscription objections group. Uh, There's a few people that have uploaded their full pre-listing packets to the group to, to share. Uh, so you can search the uh, the documents part of uh, LGSO group for that, guys. Yeah, so there's so, uh, there's a few ways to do it. 
there is my booklet, guys. It's really thick, you know, paper. And so, it, you know, feels really, you know, official. But, I mean, I have all my team, you know, showcasing them. Um, I talk about our, our mission. We talk about how technically savvy we are. Um, we get into, like, you guys can't see this, but all those little red and blue dots, there's numbers intermixed in there because we couldn't show them all because we wanted to show the whole valley. And then talk about our staging and our nice photos and the continued list of homes we've sold. So it's just, it's value add, value add, value add, and saying, hey, look, you guys need to work with us. The reason why, here's this. It's great reading material, yada, yada. That's what I do. Uh, and it's been incredibly effective. I also bring a um, uh, RPR report. I print that out in color, bind it, and I bring it to them. Um, so I have an RPR, which I can, you know, then say, hey, look, this is a brainless, mindless, you know, computer, genera computer generated report. I want to verify the numbers here. A lot of the times in my county, um, they always forget about half baths and sometimes don't know about additional bedrooms because all this stuff is actually entered by humans. So, I mean, there's going to be, you know, there has been data errors in the past, which, you know, one of my clients, Joshua, um, I got to get back to him. But, I mean, he has a five-bedroom house and, and a two-and-a-half bath, and they said a four-bed with two baths. I'm like, hmm. Oh, well. Yeah, there's going to be yeah, a little bit more value really well. Yeah, that'll limit your market. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, it, it's just all about that stuff. And But, I like, I'm, I got to – actually, I got to email him today. <laughs> <laughs> you were reminding me. <laughs> if you see Greg just shoulder roll out of the out of frame, that's why. Now I'm out. Peace out, ninjas. Uh, <laughs> hey, Daniel, yeah, you can watch this again on my Facebook page um, if you want to watch it again when the grandkiddos are not there. But, that's right. Yeah. But I, I just I, – instead of emailing guys, the one thing I really try to do and try to stand out, you know – Go meet them at their front door, bring a handwritten thank you card for meeting them or spending time on the phone with them, maybe with a coupon to a local restaurant or something or rather, just as a thank you for their time. And then say, I look forward to seeing you on Thursday at six, whatever the day and time is going to be, right? That's how you can stand out from the other agents who just want to email something over. So very impersonal and be personal, be accepting and kind, understand that they're, they're, they're freaked out, okay? They are freaked out. Buying and selling homes are freaking stressful, uh, even for us agents. I mean, we have never seen a deal go the same way twice, ever. There's always a hiccup. And for someone who's going into this thing and they don't know what's going on, they're petrified. So just give them a little bit of space, you know. And just yeah, if I remember right, I think when I was in, me and my, me and my partner, um, so I focused on the listings, and he would, he would deliver our pre-listing package in person the day before my appointment and show up in his Lexus as my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Perfect. Set me up very Your nicely. Is very keen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is my assistant. This is my bitch. Yeah, he'll go run out there and do shit for right. me. Uh, right. But that's a, that's a genius way of going about it. I mean, I have <laughs> different team members call around and or call back or confirm that, that I have a meeting with them just so that there's another voice. Um, confirming yeah. the appointment. I mean, okay, so you're an individual team or you're an individual agent. And you don't have anyone to call. Go to the receptionist and have her make a five-second phone call. Hi, this is Lily with uh, Coldwell Banker. Just want to confirm that Matt's going to be coming over there between five and six today. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Okay, well, he looks forward to seeing you. Okay, toodaloo. Bye-bye. Click <laughs> on the way or email and you said a southern bell accent all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking the whole time, like, man, alive. I mean, why why have someone else make your calls if you have like a stock? I mean, if you have some sort of like a Cockney British or Australian <laughs> accent just hiding in your skill set, I mean, just use that instead. But uh, our, let's finish out with this question from uh, from RNA. And guys, before we get to that, make sure to go to McDaniel Real Estate Systems and check out uh, Greg's favorite scripts. That's a free download. And then the farming product and all that good stuff. Uh, subscribe uh, to us on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher, depending on whether you want the audio and video, video versions, that is the best way to keep on track of the recordings. Not, I mean, they're, they're great. The, the live videos will stay on Facebook, but Greg does post a lot, and so they, they can get buried <laughs> in between all of his other stuff. The yes. best place to stay up with the recordings of the show is YouTube, iTunes, or Stitcher. So mm -hmm. Arne says, how would you change or what would you add to your marketing plan if you're going from average price point to high end, aside from polishing and common sense action. So I'll, I'll throw my two cents in and we'll finish out with Greg, your opinion on it. So one of, one of um, I've worked with a couple of guys that have been, that have gone, you know, done that, like gone from working $200,000 houses in Minneapolis to selling multi-million dollar houses in Poway, which is the nice suburban San Diego. And their perspective on it is there's really not much difference. The owners are, are the same. Uh, a lot of the objections are the same. They don't want to let it go for less than what it's worth. That's a pretty common objection that comes Actually. up. 
Um, one of my new clients that I'm going to be working with, I'm going to help him launch a podcast in the luxury space. Uh, Mike Lafito has something called the Marketing Luxury Group. And so if you check that out, you can see kind of what he's doing on the consulting side to help real estate agents take more, you know, like luxury listings. Really what it comes down to is much, much, much higher quality staging. Sometimes that involves virtual staging, which is taking taking a, an, a real vacant house and digitally adding furniture into the pictures. Uh, he showed me some before and after pictures. They're, they're insane. You literally mm -hmm. cannot tell it's virtual furniture. Uh, you can do stuff like that. There's also drone footage that's coming to be an expectation uh, if you really want to set yourself apart in the luxury uh, you know, space is to be willing to pony up you know, $500 to $1,000 for really nice photography. Uh, one of the guys here in San Diego, Dan Beer, does um, – sunrise and I think it's daylight and twilight photography is how he puts it. So you've got two different views of the home, one during the day, all sunny and bright and whatever. And then you have the twilight, which is dusk, you know, with the house lit up, but it's still kind of light outside. Uh, so you can see the features of the house. It's not just a dark home with lights from coming out from the inside. So if you're willing to do those things, that's really what separates the listings, luxury listing market is just your willingness to spend on the front end or the balls to charge them on the front end for having really great photography, videography, drone footage and stuff like that. So Greg, yeah. what say you? You need to be knowledgeable. That's going to really make it stand out the most. I mean, people look, people are there up and coming and the people that are very wealthy look they still put their each one of them put their pants on one leg at a time they each want to know what their investments are and they want to feel comfortable and safe in the transaction they want to make sure that they're ha hiring and working with people that know what they're doing so that goes all the way back to our original conversation today and becoming educated guys have ideas of the chip of your tongue you can talk about and stuff surround yourself with high-end photography photography is a massive 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 part of real estate and you said i mean we use a, a high-end photographer i mean he he and his team will blow through a house so fl flipping quick it will make your head spin but man do these things come off awesome i mean like like this stuff so we did a a night shot here and that just ended up being the better shot for that property uh, or we do a drone shot here, which I don't really like this photo, but whatever, uh, of that property there, but it really depends on the home. So if you can do staging and you can do lighting, uh, staging and, uh, and, and, and good photos, I think it's going to make a massive difference. But just know to the fact that these people are just like you, okay? But you just need to be, you just need to be intelligent, and that's going to be something that's going to you – know, and confident, okay? You have to be intelligent yeah. and confident. Not cocky, confident. I mean, That's I showed confident. up and I always close, I always tell the story that I um, I got a three million dollar listing from doing cold calls, doing appropriate follow up, and then showing up wearing jeans, an untucked dress shirt, a sports coat, and my band's tennis shoes, and I closed them in the backyard just because I was confident and I knew what I was talking about, and I gave them what they were looking for. And what I didn't know is that he was uh, he had worked for two sitting U.S. presidents advising on economic issues. Holy wow. sheep shit. So in other and, words, he didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah, he's totally in the dark. All right. <laughs> totally in the dark. <laughs> no, but that's what I would do, guys. Don't be afraid of the upper end. Don't let that number hinder you, okay? That's what a lot of people think. Like, oh, my God, it's a luxury market. They're going to hate me. I can't do it. Guys, just act as if you belong there. And that will radically transform the way you view when you go out and talking to people. Because I've door knocked in a super luxury, and I've door knocked in ghetto. Dude, the get low in, in LA, some of the nicest, most down to earth, you know, salt of the earth human beings that would invite you in and give the shirt off their back. Well, guess what? I found the same type of people just with bigger homes in, in, in LA and other places. Mm -hmm. it's, if you're going to be a dick, you're going to be a dick. If you're going to be awesome, you're going to be awesome. And they're going to live in both different price points. So don't get hung up on the price. That's all I'm going to yeah. say. Oh, man, I think we've done some good shit today. Yeah. Yeah. That was a fun one. All right, guys. Thank you so much for all the questions and the live interaction and all that good stuff. So uh, that, that is all we've got for today. Make sure to subscribe to the show and all that good stuff. And make yeah. sure to follow us. Uh, Greg, follow you on Facebook. Do not friend him. Do not. No. You no. will be unsuccessful. <laughs> Violently friend. unsuccessful. Follow. Follow him on Facebook. Uh, you can still friend me on Facebook and find me on Instagram. <laughs> I am pursuing results across all platforms. Uh, so follow and friend request me. Follow me on Instagram. 
Uh, Greg, what's your Instagram? It's McDanielCallahan.RealEstate, right? I'm actually checking, yeah. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> uh, just type in McDaniel, if you'll find him. So we're yeah, tinkering McDaniel. around with Instagram Live. Uh, so if anybody is interested in keeping on top of the developments with that, uh, you can see how we're using it. Uh, one of the ways that Greg's using it is to announce upcoming Facebook Lives, especially like what we'll go live on Instagram right before we go live on Facebook and tell people where to go find it. So that's an interesting way to cross-pollinate and mm -hmm. drive people over from a newer platform that might be a younger crowd over to Facebook where they might not be paying a lot of attention. So as we as we mature and the people that are on Instagram right now start entering the home buying market in droves, they may not have or be very active on Facebook. So that's an interesting thing to keep on track of is mm -hmm. Instagram Live. So guys, follow us on that platform. Other than that, that's all we got. We've got a good episode coming up on Wednesday. Uh, we'll be answering more questions, talking about sales and marketing. And then we've got, uh, what do we got on Friday? We've got Hank, Hank the Tank. He's coming back on the show, Hank Avink. So we're going to talk about 36 to life, when the, the idea that most agents can have an amazing life and never sell more than 36 homes in a single year just by racing to get to that 36 number and then optimizing cutting their working hours and raising their average sale price, like RNA was asking, uh, to live the best life possible and never sell more than 36 homes a year. So that's what we're going to talk about on Friday. That's going to be an epic show, guys. But uh, private message me about message me about talent prospecting. If you want someone that's going to set appointments for you, not find leads, but set appointments for you, uh, they're doing a $1,000 off their first month. Uh, so it would only be uh, $2,500 uh, your first month, and they will set about 5 to 12 appointments for you every week. Uh, private message me. I'll get you in touch with Phil uh, and everybody over there. But I, we do this because we love you. We want to see you guys succeed. I cannot wait to watch and hear you guys' success stories. Keep in touch with us. If this has been of value to you and this, and this has helped you put business into your life, share it with a friend. Uh, and then let us know, write us a testimonial, let us know what's going on. We, we would love to share your successes with everybody else to give everybody else hope that they can still, they can make more money than they did the year before. Okay. Mm -hmm. love